What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender Material video for you today. So in today's video I wanted to talk through how we could use normal maps, bump maps, and displacement maps inside of Blender in order to make our rendered materials look more realistic. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so one of the things that can make your renderings look a lot more realistic is the maps that you use um, when you start setting up your materials inside of Blender. So we're going to talk about how to set up a few of the different PBR materials and the effects that they have on your materials inside of Blender. And so for this video, any textures that we use are going to be from texturehaven.com. So you can download these for free. They're CC0. So you can download anything that I download and follow along. And we're going to start, if you sort by popular, we're going to start by downloading this kitchen wood file. And so when you download this file, you may notice that this comes with four different material files when you bring this down. So this comes with a diffuse map. The diffuse map is the texture image that you're going to apply to a face in order to create your material. It also comes with a normal map, which is a map that basically helps you simulate um, bumpiness on the surface of your material. So it makes light bounce off of your material like the material is bumpy. So there's also a roughness map, which is going to affect how and where the light bounces off of your material. And there's an ambient occlusion map, which is basically going to highlight the lighter and darker areas inside of your material. And so what we need to do is we need to set up a material that has these maps contained in it. We are going to use an example a little bit later on where we talk about displacement. Um, notice this doesn't come with a displacement map um, because it's not really a material that has a bunch of ups and downs, just a little bit of bumpiness. And so what we want to do is let's go ahead and I'm going to use my studio file. And I've made a video about creating a lighting studio, which I will link to in the notes down below. But we're going to use this in order to preview our materials. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing a shift we're just going to add a plane in here. We're going to move it up above the ground just a little bit. And then we're going to go into our shader editor. And so what we want to do is we want to create a material in our shader editor. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to click on this object right here. You don't even have to click on the object, but down below we want to click on the plus button to add a new material. So when you click on the plus button to add a new material, that's going to add a new principled shader, which is what contains all of our, uh, basically all the information associated with our material, as well as a material output node. And uh, it should set this up where your BSDF is linked into your surface. And so what we want to do is we want to start by bringing in our texture file. And so there's a few different ways you can do this. I will link to a video down below where Node Wrangler allows you to set up a PBR material automatically. For this video though, I want to bring these in one at a time. And so what we want to do is we want to start by just dragging our wood material over here. What that's going to do is that's going to bring this in as a file node. And then all we have to do is just drag the color node over to the base color in order to apply this as a material. We're not going to worry too much about UV mapping or anything like that right now. But you can see how when you did this, what you get is you get a material applied to this face of this object, right? So this has been applied in here. You may have to go back into your materials and actually assign the material to the object. Um, but for now, this is, uh, this is basically associated with our object. And so notice how if we jump over into rendering mode, and we zoom in on this, this is a fairly good looking material to begin with, right? So if we kind of zoom in, notice I'm using cycles right now um, for my renderer. You can set cycles by clicking on the little camera and selecting cycles right here. And notice how the light is reflecting off of this object. However, the problem is it doesn't look very realistic because this, this surface, if you look at the wood grain, should be a little bit bumpy and it should also only be reflecting materials in some areas and not others. And so what we want to do is we want to use these maps in order to show Blender where to render those different things. And so to start off, let's drag our normal map over. So our normal map is going to be basically this kind of purplish image. Let's go ahead and drag that in here. So when we drag this in here, it's not doing anything yet because it hasn't been applied to our principled shader. And so the first thing you might want to do is you might want to drag the color from this point over into the normal function that will create kind of a normal effect in here, but you're not really supposed to drag the data from a yellow node into a purple node. And plus we can't really adjust this right now anyway. So this isn't exactly what we want. So what we want to do is we want to add a node in here 
by doing a shift A and doing a search for the word normal. And we want to look for the normal map node. Notice how the normal map node has a yellow input and a purple output. So what that means is that means that we can hook our color into the color and then our normal into our normal. And so if you look at this, when you did this, you might notice that what happened was the way that the light was reflecting off of this material changed a little bit. So instead of the light coming directly over here, you're getting a much more understated look. And that's because what this is doing right now is this is using that normal map in order to simulate bumpiness here. And you can adjust the strength of that effect by using this slider right here. So you can click and drag this or you can type in a different value to bring this up or down. And notice how a lot of the time when you do this, the effect is kind of understated. And so when I say that it's understated, what I mean is you, you can look at this, for example, where uh, your wood grains are right here, and you can see how this surface looks bumpier or rougher, but you can also tell that this whole thing is still flat. And so we'll talk about a kind of map that allows us to change that in a second. But if we were to disconnect our base color node and just look at the normal, you can actually see that there's lighter and darker areas, basically where the wood grain would. And so what this is doing is this is really simulating using this map, the bumpiness of the surface right here. So by hooking this up, you can make your surface look more realistic. The nice thing about this too is this is only simulating this, but it's not actually moving any geometry around, meaning that it's uh, not super processor intensive to use a map like this. And so we can talk real quick um, about the roughness map as well. So the roughness map is going to be an image that looks something like this. And, and so what this map does is this map has light and dark values in it. You can see how it has whites and then darker values um, like blacks or grays or other things like that. When we plug this into our roughness value, it's going to simulate right, light reflecting more in areas that have a lighter color and less in areas that have a darker color. So this is this is pretty much us telling Blender where to simulate lighting reflections. So if we were to drag this in, we want to hook the color output of our roughness into our rough roughness node right here. So we want to hook color into roughness just like this. And so notice how now, once you do that, you're getting more reflection off of the edges over here than you were before. So now, now Blender knows exactly where the light should be reflecting off of this object. And maybe a better way to see this is, let's go ahead and turn our area lights off for a second. And we'll just add a point light in here. So I'm just gonna do a shift A, go into light and add a point light. And then I'm gonna move this up. I'm gonna move it back a little bit. And then let's go ahead and let's change this to like a 50 watt bulb. So now if we were to select this and we were to disconnect our roughness, notice how you get kind of a blanket reflection across this whole thing, right? Like over here, this whole area is getting light reflecting off of it and it just looks really washed out. You can't really see any of the detail of your texture. Well, if you drag the roughness into your roughness slot, notice how now the way the lighting reflects across here, instead of being like a blanket flat, is instead it's reflecting in a way that reflects the actual grain of the wood. So you can see how light is reflecting more off of the high areas and less off of the less high areas. So basically what this is doing is this is realistically reflecting your light as opposed to just blanket reflecting your light as if this was a completely flat surface. And so that works really well when you're working with a material like this wood that doesn't have a whole lot of up and down. But once you start getting into materials that are more like bricks or stones, you need a little bit more movement in your materials in order to make them look realistic. So what I wanna do is I'll go ahead and delete this point light out. We're gonna move this out of the way. So off to the side right here. Then I'm just gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a new plane. So let's add a plane right here. We'll move it up a little bit. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a new material because now what we wanna do is we wanna bring down a material that has a lot more up and down in it. So maybe something like, let's use this castle brick red texture. Um, this is a great texture because when you look at it, it's got both bumpiness on the face, but then also a lot of in and out because the mortar between the bricks is kind of recessed a little bit. And so what you want to do when you do this is just download all maps. And um, I usually bring in the 2K unless I'm doing something like super high resolution. You can see how these get really big 
But I find for most things, starting with the 2K and then working your way up, if you need something more detailed, is a good way to do that. And so if you look at the maps that get brought in with the castle brick, you can see how we have a couple more maps in here than we had with our wood. So for example, we have our diffuse map again, and then we have the normal map, which we talked about before. We've got our roughness map, we've got our ambient occlusion map, then we've also got a displacement map. There's also a map in here where the roughness and ambient occlusion are kind of combined together. Um, I'm not really super worried about that one at this point. We want to focus specifically on the displacement map. And so what a displacement map is, is this is a map that Blender uses to actually move your geometry up and down in order to simulate a much rougher material. So while a bump map is going to make things look bumpy, this is actually going to take the geometry and it's going to move it up and down depending on what area areas are light or dark inside of this map. And so the way that we're going to do that is there's a few more settings we need to set in order to make this work. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to create a new material in our shader editor. Let's go ahead and get our color map brought in, or our diffuse map. So we'll bring this in, hook this into color. So we've got our brick material right here. We'll go ahead and we'll bring our roughness map in and hook these together. We'll bring our normal map in. We'll add our normal map node. We'll click right here and then we'll hook these up. And so if you kind of zoom in on this and you look at it, you can see how while this is giving you the bumpiness of your material on this face, so you can see the bumpiness in here, this is very clearly a flat material, right? Like it's 100% flat. You can tell that it was basically placed on here just as like a flat image on a plane, almost like a sticker on a piece of paper. So it doesn't look very realistic. And so what we want to do is we want to use this displacement map in order to make this look more realistic. The displacement map is unique in the sense that you plug it into your material output. You don't plug it into your principled shader. So if we drag our displacement map in right here, then this is going to hook up into your displacement node right here. But like we talked about before, we don't want a yellow node going into a purple node, right? That's not what we want to do. So what we want to do is we want to do a shift A and then search for a displacement node. So we're just going to bring displacement in here. We're going to plug our color map, I believe into our height, and then our displacement into our displacement. And notice how right here, nothing happened. And so the first thing we need to do is go into our material properties. And we need to scroll down into our settings because we need to set this material up to, to accept more than just bump. So you need to select your material, go into your settings, and under surface, there's an option for displacement only or displacement and bump. So um, that would give you displacement only, would use your displacement map in order to displace this. And so when you do this, notice that what this does is this basically makes your material disappear. Well, your material didn't actually disappear. What it did is as soon as you selected the option for displacement only, it started applying this displacement. Notice this only shows up in your rendering when you're using cycles. But if you rotate down, you can see how this material kind of jumped down like this. And so the reason for that is because this is taking this material and it's moving it based on our displacement option. But the problem is we don't have enough geometric detail in this object right now, even though it's being displaced, in order to um, actually create like a surface that has ups and downs in here, right? So even if you adjust the scale or anything else, you're not gonna get a very good result because all this is, is this is a rectangle with four corners that this is trying to move up and down. But there's not enough detail in here for this to actually create the brick look. One thing you could do here is you could come in here and you could apply a subdivision surface modifier. So what a subdivision surface modifier is gonna do is that's gonna subdivide this object so that it has more detail. So notice how when you do that, and then you kind of rotate down inside of cycles, you are getting some ups and downs in here, but it still doesn't look very good. The reason for that is because this hasn't subdivided this object nearly enough for us to get the detail that we need, right? Like this needs like thousands of points in here to really make this realistic. So even if you turn this up, 
which you can do. Notice how when you start turning this up, you do get a lot more detail in here, but it can be kind of hard on your computer and you don't want to be constantly adjusting the number of subdivisions that are in here. And so what we can do is we can use one of the Blender experimental features instead that's contained inside of Cycles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my uh, render properties and under my feature set, what I want to do is I want to select the option for experimental feature set. What that's going to do is that's going to add an option inside of your subdivision surface modifier that's going to make this a lot easier. We can also set our device to GPU instead. If you have a good graphics card, then this will make this render faster because it'll use that graphics card in order to do this. But now if we go back into our subdivision surface modifier, Notice how we now have an option in here for render adaptive. And so as soon as you check on the box for render adaptive, what this is going to do is this is going to basically automatically figure out how much this needs to be diced up in order to create your displacement. So in order to create your displacement in a realistic way. And notice how you can add detail to this by turning your levels up right here. So the higher levels that you have in here, um, the better this is going to work. But now you're actually getting more of a brick wall material, right? Like if you zoom out and you look at this, now you have ups and downs and actual recesses in this object. And so what you can do is you can start adjusting the strength of this displacement by adjusting the scale and the mid-level. And we're spe specifically going to focus on the scale in this situation. So notice how the more I scale this up, the more this is displacing these objects inside of my rendering up and down. So you can kind of adjust this until you get the look that you're going for. Um, you don't want to overdo it on this one, obviously, because you start getting all of this noise in here and things don't look very good. But now if you look at this from the side, Right. If you look at this from the edge, it no longer looks like we've just applied a sticker to this. It's actually moving your geometry up and down in order to create your roughened surface. And so one other quick thing about this is you see how this gets subdivided into a circle. There's a couple different ways that you could fix that. You can either tab into edit mode and you can add edge loops around the edge. So you could just add edge loops around here. You could also select these four edges, right click in here and do an edge crease. And so if you do an edge crease and you move your mouse out and this creases these all the way to one, now the corners stay creased so they don't move around and get subdivided while everything else does. So you can use that edge crease function in order to keep this from making your rectangular shape circular inside a blender. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know how to do this before? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.